Psychology and mathematics are very different disciplines, but like chocolate and peanut butter, they go together surprisingly well. Why do we need them and why do they need us? <laughs> Stay tuned. Psychology and math. One is totally made up and requires training in arcane mysticism to understand, and the other is firmly based in reality. Wait, which one's which? Despite one being totally real and the other being completely fake, there's a surprising number of opportunities for cross-pollination between the two disciplines. Which one's which? I suspect a lot of opportunities for collaboration are frequently missed because people simply lack awareness of how well they go together, like olives and watermelon. Seriously, you don't know what you're missing. <laughs> So let's look at some ways that psychology and the maths can be mutually beneficial to each other. Psychology is a discipline heavily devoted to the understanding of our primate brains, which evolved to handle the problems faced in the changing African landscape. Our earliest number systems reflect our cognitive limitations. Now this needs to be a video all its own, but the creation of number systems and counting in cultures around the world is actually fascinating. Numbers less than five are almost universally symbolized with patterns of objects that match in number to the quantity they symbolize. While dealing with larger numbers requires development of symbols. And this suggests a limit on processing ability for item numbers above this threshold. Some have suggested that counting in base 10, likely because humans tend to have, well, 10 fingers, actually slowed progress and discoveries in mathematics. Psychology is at the foundation of the invention, or discovery, depending on who you ask, of mathematics. Now this highlights the fact that there are concepts that are simply beyond the reach of our human cognition. Four- and five-dimensional shapes are all but impossible for us to visualize. However, mathematics provides us a raft that allows us to wade much further beyond our cognitive shoreline than we otherwise could. Mathematicians are often interested in how to overcome these cognitive limitations, either within themselves or within their students, to bolster understanding of surprising and counterintuitive discoveries. For example, did you know that if you add all natural numbers up, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 and so on, to infinity, what's the answer that you get? Well, according to mathematicians like Ramanujan, the answer is negative 1 12th. There is a burgeoning field devoted to the psychology of math education. Understanding brain development and the transition into concrete operational thought and onto formal operational thought is critical to the timing of math exposure for young children. Comparative psychology provides insights into how animals, from invertebrates like honeybees to non-human primates, uh, from pre-industrial human cultures to modern societies, process numbers. This helps us understand what are the most intuitive types of mathematical reasoning and points to our mathematical blind spots. Psychology can help mathematicians understand the nature of expertise and practice. Inspiration from the structure of nature's best computational engine, the brain, can help inspire new approaches to mathematical problems. Neural networks, optimal decision-making, signal detection, and information theory are only a few of many areas of mutual interest. A mathematician with a background in psychology will never run out of problems on which to work. Now is a good time for the gratuitous request to feed the algorithm demon by hitting the like button and subscribing. It's the number one thing you can do to help us grow the channel. Hey, algorithms, another common thread between psychologists and mathematicians. So far, I've been talking about how psychology can benefit mathematicians, but you can bet the benefits go the other direction too. Like the other natural sciences, psychologists have an obvious need for mathematics, statistics, and probability to interpret their scientific observations. However, psychology has some special interrelationships with math that you should know about. Among the natural sciences, psychology has uniquely noisy data with large numbers of factors contributing to behavior. 
This requires psychologists to employ inferential statistics that move far beyond the basic t-tests and ANOVAs that you find in other life sciences. Things like factor analysis, multiple regression, meta-analytical techniques, Bayesian inference, among others. This means that the best psychology programs have a need to engage in a lot of training their students in quantitative reasoning. Now, the brain itself is fundamentally a computational machine for processing information, which means being able to model behavior mathematically is key to understanding the way the brain works. For example, in classical conditioning, the brain has to learn to use the presence of a conditioned stimulus to make predictions about the presence of an unconditioned stimulus. Now, this process is well modeled through a Bayesian updating algorithm. Turing machines shed insight on the structure of memory. If you study interval timing, you will need to have an understanding of logarithms and calculus. In short, mathematics is everywhere in psychology. Now here's the catch. You can easily spend a career learning the intricacies of just behavior, meaning it's a rare individual with expertise in both behavior and the necessary mathematics. A psychologist with a strong background in mathematics will be in high demand, and the mathematician who is open to collaboration will almost certainly find a psychologist friend who has a problem that they can help with. These are just a few reasons why fostering relationships between mathematics and psychology is critical to advancing our disciplines. I encourage you to consider the benefits of the combination of mathematics and psychology. Top graduate programs in psychology have a high need for sophisticated quantitative skills. If you can highlight that you have a background in both areas, it makes you stand out from the crowd in graduate applicant pools. Now, if you're a psychologist watching this video, I encourage you to go out and make friends with some mathematicians. They're gonna have some really cool insights on some of the problems that you're dealing with, and you never know where that next breakthrough might come from. If you're a mathematician and you stumbled across this video, I hope that you'll consider talking to a psychologist about how they use math in their discipline. I hope that you'll be able to draw inspiration for solving your problems from some of nature's best problem solving machines, the brain. If you found this video helpful, hit the like button, subscribe to get more videos on all things psychology, and until next time, keep thinking. But which one was which?